Certifications are a huge resume booster and extremely important, especially for those just starting out in IT. They prove to employers that you have what it takes to do the job. In this nugget, we're going to cover the differences between vendor neutral and vendor specific certifications. We'll talk about some of the exams within these certifications and we'll get you started out on the right path to become a certified systems administrator. We're going to start here with vendor neutral certifications. Now, what does that actually mean, vendor neutral? It means these are certifications that do not target any specific technology or platform or vendor like an Apple or Google or a Microsoft. These are baseline certifications that apply to all vendors and technologies. Now, CompTIA has the most popular vendor neutral certifications. These first two are by far CompTIA's most popular certifications. And I tell anybody trying to get into IT to tackle these first because they'll give you a solid foundation that you can work on and later on narrow your scope and specialize in specific fields. The A plus consists of two exams. Think of this as your hardware exam. It covers PC hardware, mobile device hardware, and also a little bit of operating system installation across all the OSs, Windows, iOS, Android, OS X, and Linux. The Network Plus consists of a single exam and covers configuration management and troubleshooting of wired and wireless network devices. So if you're brand new to IT, this is where I suggest you start. And in fact, fun story, about four years ago, my brother came to me and he said, Garth, I can't stand my job. It's so boring. I don't make enough money and I'm miserable. He worked in receiving, scanning packages and loading packages all day. And I said, dude, you need a job in IT. Take the A+, plus, take the Network+. Plus. In less than a year, he had an entry-level network administration job. Four years later, he's a full-blown network engineer making tons of money and happier than I've ever seen him. And by the way, he used nothing but CBT nuggets to get there. We have all three of these exams as courses in our library. There are a couple of other systems administration CompTIA certs out there. Server Plus covers server architecture, storage, security, networking and troubleshooting, plus disaster recovery, and Linux Plus, which covers common tasks and all the major distributions of Linux. Once you have a vendor neutral certification or two under your belt, you can begin to specialize with vendor specific certifications. Microsoft has some of the most popular systems administration certifications, and that's simply because a lot of organizations run Windows. Windows 7, 8, 10 on the client side and Windows Server in their data centers. The first thing we have here is what's known as an MCP, a Microsoft Certified Professional. This is just a designation you get when you pass your first Microsoft exam. So pass any Microsoft exam, you're an MCP. We also have what's known as the MTA, the Microsoft Technology Associate. These are exams that are vendor specific versions of A plus and network plus. They're just foundational for whatever role or field you want to break into. And you know what? Let me bring my browser up here because I actually have the page open and uh, get rid of my pen. There we go. <laughs> if we scroll down here, you can see that this MTA certifications are a great place to start if you want to get into the technology field. And if we scroll down and expand the exams, there's about 14 of them or so in here. But you have the Windows Operating System Fundamentals, Software Development Fundamentals, Database Fundamentals, Windows Server Administration, Networking Fundamentals. So these are just ground level certs for whatever field you're interested in. Now, this next one is known as the MCSA, the Microsoft Certified Solutions Associate. This is by far the most popular, most sought after, and most desired certification by employers. Now, these are actually role-based certifications. So there's an MCSA for productivity, for the office stuff. There's an MCSA for mobility, for cloud, for infrastructure. And on the systems administration side, it actually consists of three exams, one for compute, one for networking, and one for Active Directory. Which, at a high level, by the way, boils down to installing Windows, that's compute, making multiple Windows machines talk to each other, that's networking, and managing users, that's Active Directory. This next one is the Advanced Microsoft Certification, the MCSE, or Solutions Expert. What you need to do here is pass a single exam from a list of exams within a role. Those lists of exams are known as electives and are usually very specific, focusing on a single technology. You pass one of those and you become an MCSE for that year and also acquire one of these fancy badges for your transcript as you do with passing any of these Microsoft certifications. This last one here has nothing to do with systems administration. I just threw it in here for completeness. The MCSD or Solutions Developer Certification targets developers building 
mobile, web, and desktop-based applications. We also have vendor-specific certifications for Linux. These are the most popular systems administration-based Linux certifications, so if you're looking to gain and prove your skills with Linux, you'll begin here with Linux Essentials. This consists of a single exam, and it covers really just awareness of Linux, knowledge of all the major Linux distributions like Debian, Ubuntu, CentOS, Red Hat, SUSE, and also a little bit about finding your way around the Linux system through basic command line operations like file system, users, and security. From there, if you want to head deeper into Linux, you can start looking at the LPIC exams. There's LPIC 1 and LPIC 2. LPIC 1 is basic administration and is really focused on installation and configuration of hardware, the Linux operating system, packages and package management, and a little bit deeper into command line operations and even some light scripting. And by the way, this one consists of two exams. Heading even deeper into Linux, the LPIC 2 Certified Engineer Certification covers the advanced side of systems administration, covering networking services like DNS, DHCP, SSH, web servers, file servers, etc. And this also consists of two exams. We also have a handful of Red Hat certifications. Red Hat is the enterprise data center side version of Linux. So we have the RHCSA, that's the administration exam, which consists of a single exam and focuses on basic administration tasks. And there's also an RHCSE, which is the engineering side, the more advanced administration certification. So those are your vendor specific certifications for Microsoft and Linux. And yes, we have many of these exams covered as courses in our content library here at CBT Nuggets. So the most common path to become a certified systems administrator is to begin with those vendor neutral certifications, specifically A plus and net plus, as they'll give you a solid foundation to work from. And from there, you can move into the vendor specific certifications through Microsoft or Linux. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.